when you first arrived here um, in 1965, yeah. what did this field here used to look like? Well, it was just that part of the, you know, the, the quens and the uh, silver bats and mm -hmm. just overgrowth. Other than that, there might have been trees mm -hmm. growing around. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And in terms of the, uh, the trees that were growing here when you first arrived, what sort of species did you see? Self-seeded rowans and silver bats mostly. Uh -huh. yes. what, what, what sort of plants were there that you saw apart from trees? Oh, uh, natural. Uh, heather and whens and maybe... Uh, Winds being gorse. Gorse. Broom, yes. Yeah, broom, yes. Yeah, broom and, and gorse. And, and, uh, Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. And so you're saying there's a, a patch of land just over there that uh, looks still so like it would yes. have looked like that? Yes, it would have looked like that. Okay. Yes. Do you want to, to show me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. That's all good. That's, that's what it would have looked like if you were seeing static. Maybe a highlight of eyes, I think. I don't know, it's pretty so you're saying in the past there probably would have been more heather like this? Heather, yes. Oh, I think there would have been. So you no, see that gorse is, gorse is taken over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, he's planted these, these hawthorn trees are planted yeah, yeah. quite recently. So, yeah, that I was going to ask this thing. So why, why is this particular area still um, the way it used to be? Well, the lady who owns it has just kept it like that. I see, she okay. Just kept oh, it she like that. She didn't, it. She she didn't want it ploughed up or, uh, or uh, cultivated. She just wanted the trees and what it left uh, the way it was. For conservation? Or? I, I would say for a while, life and conservation, uh -huh. yes, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. okay. It's just like that, she and Heather. And see the, the burrows, whoever's going to be there, like. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there'll be rabbits and yes. what? What other kinds of animals would you Badgers. see here? Badgers, rabbits. Oh, and there could be deer up here as well. To find out more about what's happened on this piece of land, I visited the owner, Deirdre McKinch, who's the chairperson of the Torrefin District Heritage Society and is in interested in hills, heritage, and horticulture. She's lived here nearly 30 years. I had been here for about. Mm -hmm. 15 years before he decided to, before he decided to plant and was going to plant a woodland. Mm -hmm. The land wasn't really useful for anything else for my purposes. I used to place my goats up there, mm -hmm. took them up there every morning and brought them back down every night. But that really, I didn't really want to do that anymore mm -hmm. and I decided that trees were the answer. And at that time, because the croft was registered as a croft, the Scottish executive were giving grants and of course it's only native species, which just suited me fine. What was the soil like when you were mm. It's very acidic, and as I say, it wouldn't have had any, it, there would have been no fertilizers or any improvement in it, on it, in perhaps the last 50 or 60 years. I don't think it would ever be cultivated up there. Um, the trees would never have grown very high up there. Well, there are some big trees, you know, there are some big trees. But it's very, it's very windy site, so it may well have just been scrubbed for quite a long time. Andy Day remembers back to a time when heath and scrub dominated far more of this landscape than it does today, and he reckons it would have covered most of the areas where there are now plantation forests. Oh, probably just, just hill, natural hill, trees and scrub. Second mm -hmm. is the the lads used the the kind of rough land is uh, shooting the hairs. Is there anywhere where we might be able to get old maps or, or anything like that that might give us some clues as to what might have been there in the 1800s? But would have been a a blurry mood, I suppose. So unless the the lads have some records of the past. Well, he did. Mr. Morrison, who is the current laird of Mount Blairy, dug out a map of his estate from 1838, hand-painted on linen, that shows exactly what would have been on this land before it was converted for agriculture. It's a beautifully hand-drawn map wow. and linen. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it shows the extent of the really the steep. Now it's quite long. It's all right. coloured in as well. Yes, it's coloured in, isn't it's it? It's incredible. And this, this is the bridge that you're interested in. Uh -huh. Now you can see here that this, it's termed Hill of Brown Side. Yes. Muir yeah. and Pasture. And pasture, so that's Muirland and Pasture. Yes. That's uh -huh. right, and it extends along here and this along the top of the hill. So we're currently right. around about here and this is the field in which we were recording right. with <laughs> Sandy and <laughs> <Kay> did. <laughs> the evidence on this map shows that this was rough paving and since then um, um, Sandy and Edith have taken this, this part of the land into cultivation. Well, I'm just wondering, it says here, muir and pasture. Yeah. And that would suggest that this is more rough grazing, whereas this is maybe not quite so palatable stuff, maybe more dominated by heather, whereas this is maybe more grassy, perhaps, I wonder. And this is basically going up the hill towards the forest that you can see on the horizon from Jimmy's Ground. And basically this whole hill, instead of the plantation of forest that we can see today, is actually a moorland with quite a bit of grass. Moorland pasture. That means that they would have put, they would put the sheep there to graze. So my search has come to an end at last. From a handful of indicator species, I've managed to piece together a long lost landscape that is difficult to imagine as you look at the current scene of arable fields and plantation forestry. And I've managed to find a place that I think shows us exactly what the moor and pasture classification on the old map would have looked like. My search has finally taken me to this remote hilltop around one kilometre away from the land that we were originally looking at, which apparently has never been touched for agriculture or for any other purpose. And we see these patches of gorse with Scots pine, like you see behind me, uh, mixed in with uh, smatterings of birch, rowan, uh, in a mosaic of heather and grass. Plants have the capacity to tell complex and fascinating stories, not only about the current conditions they're facing, but about the history of the land. And all you need to be able to read these stories is a handful of indicator species and a basic knowledge of their ecology.